There's a point at which the people involved in this have stopped regarding people of African heritage as human. And um, I don't know how you find your way back from that. Al Jazeera has obtained the largest leak of documents in British political history. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. It is absolutely shocking. Hundreds of thousands of internal communications expose how operatives secretly take control of Britain's Labour Party. The Labour Party is a criminal conspiracy against its members. Free speech was shut down. They tell the inside story of how Sir Keir Starmer, who could be Britain's next prime minister, leads a lawless party. I've waited 17 months to appear in front of you in this hall as leader of our great party. Confidential documents expose tactics to discredit and expel rivals in the party. People are actually quite dangerous who are in with the Labour Party. They were playing with people's lives here. They reveal how Starmer's predecessor was undermined by a smear campaign from within. It disabled him as a politician and as a potential prime minister. Really nice to see you here. Bye. How British democracy, known as the mother of parliaments, is being undermined by spying and dirty tricks. No one would expect that a political party would associate themselves with the whole scale hacking of the press. It looks like somebody is constantly monitoring me, where I'm going and where my car is parked and where my children is going. It just stinks to high heaven what they're doing in the background. We speak to people whose voices have been silenced, including those who support Palestinian rights. It's very painful. As Palestinians, there was no room for us to enter this debate, and that's how it was designed to be. And the files reveal how a hierarchy of racism exists under Starmer's leadership. I face more racism in the Labour Party than I have in the rest of my life combined. In episode three of The Labour Files, the secret surveillance of party members. Somebody actually working inside the Labour Party against ethnic minorities. The members in Newham were essentially stalked. A party that seems to tolerate discrimination the Labour Party has done nothing. It's as if they're colluding with this type of racism. The majority of Britain's black and minority ethnic population vote Labour, one of the two parties that govern the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all from all the different communities that have come here tonight. In Britain, black, Asian and minority ethnic people are known as BAME. Tens of thousands joined the Labour Party after the election of Jeremy Corbyn as leader in 2015. Our party is going to, I hope, become more inclusive, more involved, more democratic. Among the new members is Marcia Hutchinson. I was really impressed with the policies that Jeremy Corbyn was putting forward, and I thought, this can make a difference, and I can help make that difference. Ours is the party of equality for all, the party that has pioneered every progressive initiative to root out racism from our society. He was a lifelong anti-racist campaigner and a champion of Palestinian rights. He challenged established politicians in his own party and the bureaucracy that was meant to serve him. Since Jeremy Corbyn was elected in 2015, the MPs in the Parliamentary Labour Party wanted to get rid of him, most of them. And briefings to the press started even as Jeremy Corbyn was giving his acceptance speech for the leadership. I knew there were disagreements in the party, so I didn't necessarily expect to be welcomed with open arms by all sides, but I hadn't anticipated the level of hostility that I found. Hutchinson was awarded an NBE, or Royal Recognition of Achievement. She set up the Pipeline Project, 
an initiative to support black people entering politics in the northern city of Manchester. Unless we challenge, nothing will happen. She is elected as Labour councillor, but her experience troubles her. I face more racism in my five years in the Labour Party than I have in the rest of my life combined. As well as hundreds of gigabytes of documents, the Labour files include audio and video. Amongst them is a recording of a Zoom meeting. A senior Labour figure speaks to a large group of Bain Party employees. I've been asked to speak about my experiences. Years ago, she was injured in a racist attack. I still look at the scar because it's still there. But I look at it most often in the workplace. People make it clear to me that I don't deserve, in their view, to be in their room. I brought my experience to the party and I found I was held to different standards to white men. So I'd be asked my opinion, then immediately spoken over as I responded. There was even an hour long meeting discussing me with my line manager about changes that I had implemented because he'd asked me to, for which I never had any recourse or right of reply. Someone even kicked a piece of furniture next to me because he didn't like what I was saying. People like me are stuck in this weird purgatory between visibility and invisibility. My skin colour gives me visibility, and yet my experience and skills are invisible. And all these things add up to an exclusive, not an inclusive culture. It's sickening. It's sickening. We are simply there for set dressing, and if we have the temerity to speak up, we are attacked. The senior Labour figure also wrote a formal complaint to the party. I am now being invited to submit my CV for a role which essentially is taking minutes and providing administrative assistance. I would like to know whether the offer to go back several stages in my career is related to the numerous instances of toxic working culture I have previously raised. It's utterly sickening that this is happening in a party that claims to be anti-racist, that claims that black lives matter. We don't. We really do not matter. The Labour Files is not the first leak to provide evidence of racism within the party. I wasn't part of the secret WhatsApp group culture where messages about me were freely exchanged. A leaked document from 2020 revealed a messaging group of more than 17 senior management figures, including General Secretary Ian McNichol. The leak reveals that senior party management have been exchanging derogatory and racist messages. The party's new leader, Sir Keir Starmer, promises BAME staff a full inquiry. I can assure you that this investigation is not going to be a whitewash. I know what an independent investigation looks like, and I know what I'm looking for. The Labour files include unpublished messages from the same WhatsApp group. One refers to MP Diane Abbott, who later announced that she had type 2 diabetes. Diane Abbott suddenly ill for today's vote, so wasn't able to make it. Ha, ha, ha. Doctor's note, please. She literally makes me sick. I find this very shocking. That's an extraordinary thing to say about a Labour MP. And it's not as if I've ever had a conversation with her. She just seems to be expressing her own hatred of a black woman. It's very, very shocking. And it means that the Labour Party isn't necessarily a safe space for black women. Diane Abbott is an elected MP of, I think, 35 years standing someone saying she looked perfectly fine when I saw her slithering down Vic Street. Slither is what a snake does, and using that kind of animalistic analogy, I mean, what you do when you want to abuse someone is firstly you dehumanise them. Dehumanising people, minoritised people, racialised people is, is a profoundly important way 
in which racism operates. Again, it's about power, but it's also about turning them into groups who are not like us. And it's the tolerance of this bullying that's when racism becomes institutionalized. Diane Abbott reveals illness and hits out at Fisher's Tory campaign. Abbott is truly repulsive. And then, oh my God, sorry, this is probably totally out of order, but type one is the medical one and type two is the bad diet one, correct? Maybe that's why she had to be shuffled from the health job. Someone should have asked her when she was diagnosed. It's just like, it's just, it's just disgusting. There's a point at which the people involved in this have stopped regarding people of African heritage as human. And um, I don't know how you find your way back from that. The former opposition attorney general, Shami Chakrabarti, is also discussed. I'm sitting next to Shami for dinner. Alan responds with an ice pick emoji. An ice pick was used by Stalin to kill a party rival, Leon Trotsky. If this was a private sector organization and people were on record talking like this about colleagues, there would have been some sort of reprimand and the Labour Party has done nothing. It's as if they're colluding with this type of racism. It tells me everything I need to know about the Labour Party, that it's, it's not fit for purpose. A senior barrister, Martin Ford, leads the investigation that Starmer commissioned in 2020. It concludes that the Labour Party is... Not a welcoming place for people of colour. The WhatsApp messages published two years ago expose overt and underlying racism and sexism. The substance of the quoted messages is totally inappropriate from senior staff of a purportedly progressive political party. What's worrying is that in response to the Ford report, that accusation has been completely ignored and they're not willing to acknowledge it or talk about it. it shone a light on some of the things that had been going on. I'm afraid Sir Keir Starmer's leadership is giving succor to racists within the party. The Ford Report also describes a... hierarchy of racism. The party's more recent steps to address the problems with anti-Semitism for example, have not been matched by a commitment to tackle other forms of racism. When I would speak to my peers and the superiors about why we're not tackling Islamophobia and anti-black racism with the same ferocity as we were with anti-Semitism, the response was always, anti-Semitism is the organization's priority. As soon as an email would come in from the Jewish Chronicle, I would be told to stay behind and act on that case, even if it was just to suspend the member without even sending them questions, just so we can go back to the Jewish Chronicle and say, we've suspended this member. Other forms of discrimination do not result in automatic suspension. When we'd get lists from Labour Muslim Network, they would often sit in the complaint center for a while or in the complaints inbox. We weren't ever instructed to work on those immediately. One complaint under investigation concerns party member Martin Bridgman. He has shared several Islamophobic social media posts. The particular depiction of the Prophet Muhammad as a pedophile is something which the long-held Islamophobic trope and it's been used over centuries to, to suggest that there's something very unlike us um, about Muslim and Muslim men in particular. When I had opened the case, I realized that the evidence that was provided was caricatures of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And to me, that's a clear-cut Islamophobic trope. 
Bridgman is not suspended, but sent a message by the complaints team, suggesting that he should be more welcoming. Definitely needs something along the lines of, can you see how somebody might find your post offensive? And possibly something along the lines of, do you think this cartoon helps create a welcoming home for Muslim members? To be responded to with a, a curt email and an encouragement to think about inclusivity suggests that the disciplinary process doesn't see Islamophobia and doesn't want to see Islamophobia. And I'd go further than that. It suggests that there's a degree of tolerance of it. The files show that journalist Rod Liddell is also being investigated. He'd written. For many Muslims, the anti-Semitism is visceral, an ingrained part of their unpleasant ideology. Party official Emily Aldno emails. He would be suspended under bringing the party into disrepute. Didn't want to do anything because he's a journalist without you knowing about it first. John Stolliday, the head of party's governance and legal unit, writes. Apparently, Rod Liddell is chummy with Ian Austin and, by extension, TW. I still want to do this, but we're not under pressure to do it, so may just sit on it for now. TW refers to then-deputy leader Tom Watson, who, along with MP Ian Austin, opposes the Corbyn leadership. Two years later, Liddell is eventually suspended. Trevor Phillips, the former head of Britain's Equalities Commission, is being investigated. So what the survey is showing us is the emergence of what you might describe as a nation within the nation. I'd say that hardly anybody wants to see that happen. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? If you replace the word Muslim with Jew or, or black or another racial minority, Self-evidently, to anybody hearing that, that would be a, a racist statement. In his suspension notice, the party provides examples of Islamophobia. Phillips links the causes of wrongdoing involving Muslims to their faith. A group of Germany's five million or so settled Muslim migrants had, for some reason, suddenly and inexplicably decided to run amok. To talk about violence or bad behavior in, by Muslims in Germany um, is a massive thing for the far right. It's grossly irresponsible, plays straight into the favorite tropes and language of the far right, is inflammatory. Phillips also links the abuse of girls in England to Islam. Authorities in towns such as Rotherham and Rochdale remain reluctant to associate the child grooming scandals with social norms within the largely Pakistani Muslim neighborhoods in which they took place. What is it that Trevor Phillips and others think makes it okay to make such generalizing, disparaging, derogatory statements about Muslims and think it's, it's just everyday conversation? It identifies a minority as a problem. And that's one of the key features in which racism proceeds. I should have known better. The integration of Muslims will probably be the hardest task we've ever faced. Halima Khan is the investigating officer in Philip's case. It seemed like I was reading something from a far-right manifesto that you'd expect from the likes of Tommy Robinson and the EDL. Tommy Robinson is the former leader of the far-right English Defence League. Khan's colleagues also feel that Phillips is guilty of Islamophobia. He was saying confidently that Muslims are not like us. He was using lines around Muslim ghettos, these incredibly racist talking points that the far-right used to discriminate against Muslims um, on a daily basis. So I was uh, disgusted. Those under investigation are asked to explain their conduct. Phillips does not. He refused to apologize for his statements. In fact, he felt that he had authority to make those statements because he was former 
chair of the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Had you replaced any of the words that Trevor Phillips had said about Muslims with Jewish, Trevor Phillips would have been expelled. Phillips was suspended for over a year, but then reinstated as a party member. The fact that Trevor Phillips was readmitted just demonstrates in black and white how little the Labour Party care about Islamophobia and how little they need to care as well because there was no kind of moral outrage to kind of show how egregious this was. What was fascinating was that he was unsuspended by the Labour Party in a very unusual way. Coincidentally, shortly before he was about to take up a job with Sky News hosting their flagship Sunday morning politics programme in which he would be interviewing leading Labour politicians. Newham in East London is a diverse community. Residents have Pakistani, Bangladeshi, white, African and Caribbean heritage. The election of Corbyn as leader sees a sudden growth in membership of the party and interest in local politics. Welcome, Jeremy Corbyn! Suddenly all these people are, are thinking, oh, I'm going to join the Labour Party. We've got Jeremy Corbyn. There are ideas now. We can talk about freedom and equality and good social services and a proper national health service. But not everyone in the party welcomes the new members. We are a borough which is 100% Labour borough, but there wasn't enough representation of the Muslim community, especially Pakistani community. All the Labour Party leaders was from the white members of the community. Pre-2016, the Labour Party was quite small in Newham and meetings were even smaller. So people had positions. I think it became, for many of them, like a social club. A factional battle breaks out based on racial lines. A regional party organiser, Carl Morris, complains about Muslim community leaders. Morris and Amy Fode have been concerned about South Asian members. Amy and I were alerted to a gathering of predominantly Asian men on the pavement. Several Asian party members are congregating, waiting to attend the party's annual general meeting. Carl states that he was alerted to a group of Pakistani men. So Amy Fode decided to take a photo of these individuals I felt that that was completely inappropriate. Morris's complaint continues. The events on Thursday validate earlier information about a coordinated attempt to infiltrate in Newham by the Pakistani community. This is a toxic combination, and it makes an early freeze date for the selection process of local council candidates for the 2018 municipal elections essential. It was quite clear to me that there was something insidious going on. Carl Morris states explicitly that he fears Newham is being infiltrated by a number of Pakistani men. Something that I saw as clear-cut Islamophobia the word infiltrate is quite a loaded term, especially when you're talking about a group of Muslims who are trying to engage within politics. It's shocking to use the word infiltrate. It's othering, it's putting people outside of the mainstream. It's very symptomatic that somebody who's working full-time for the Labour Party would see people who wanted to join as infiltrators. I think that's quite disgraceful and says a huge amount about their level of consciousness around race. A councillor, Obeid Khan, is suspended from the party. Local community groups send a letter to Robin Wales, Newham's mayor. 
we wish to express our dissatisfaction, anger, and disappointment at the treatment of a leading figure in the Muslim community, Councillor Obaid Khan. We believe you have contrived and manipulated the party processes to get him unfairly expelled with trumped up and false accusations against him. Mayor Wales passes the letter to John Stolliday, the head of the party's legal and governance unit. The mayor of Newham at that time then sent an email across to John Stolliday stating that the contents were libelous in form and seeking advice on what action he can take against the members. Stolliday writes back to Mayor Wales. I'm sorry you have been subject of such horrible lies and smears. As for disciplinary action against those individuals, I agree that we need to protect you. If you have any more evidence that we can tie to individuals, then do send it through. Instead of questioning the mayor at that time in, in regards to why the members were claiming racial discrimination, John Stolliday decided to agree with the mayor and say that these accusations are libelous and decided to take action against the individuals that had raised the complaints. Tahir Mirza is one of the Muslim Labour Party members who is accused of libel. This is the element of some kind of Islamophobia clearly mentioned in this letter. These things suggest how they feel about the local community, particularly the Pakistani community being mentioned. A fellow Labour Party activist, Mahmoud Mirza, was also accused of undermining Mayor Wales. When we joined the Labour Party, we believed in the fairness and the definition of the Labour Party, and this is totally going against the Labour Party. The attitude towards Tahir and Mahmood was that they were dangerous, that they had their own agenda, and that they were carrying out communal politics. Muslim men on a mission to destroy the Labour Party. The atmosphere became even worse after the election of the new party leader in 2020. Labour Prime Minister and leader of the Labour Party. Under Starmer, it changed quite quickly. We were told what we couldn't debate at meetings. We couldn't debate miscarriages of justice. And quite quickly, I believe our free speech was shut down in the Labour Party. It was a very, very unpleasant and toxic atmosphere to be in because you could be accused of all sorts of things. It was like warfare. A Newham party member, David Gillies, sends a letter to David Evans, Labour's general secretary, with an attachment. I enclose a report and appendices which set out systematic breaches of Labour party rules and possibly electoral law by a small group of party members as they seek to take control of the two constituencies that make up the London Borough of Newham. A hundred-page dossier is secretly compiled by a member of the party. It provides information on mostly South Asian residents of Newham. Wow, that's my company as well. I can see recordings of my speech that I've made. Wow. When I first read the dossier, I was quite terrified, actually, for the members. It was horrific to see the level of detail that was included in such a dossier. It's a shocking document. It seems to me that somebody actually working inside the Labour Party against ethnic minorities. The dossier contains private information about the lives and activities of Muslim members and their families. We have redacted this information. 
Mehmoud Mirza is registered to vote and is a member of the party at an address in West Ham. There is clear evidence that Mehmoud Mirza, his wife and children live in East Ham. One of his children attends the nearby academy and the other a local primary school. His car, license number, has been parked on several occasions near to... It looks like somebody is co constantly monitoring me. They have got all the information about me, what I do, where I go, where my children go, where I work, how many properties I have, how many tenants live in my property, and how many are the member of the Labour Party. They shouldn't have that information, especially towards my children, where they're going to school. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and I'm gutted. That's right. The members in Newham were essentially stalked, and for me, it posed a significant safety risk because in the dossier was mentioned where members had parked their cars, their car registration numbers, where their children went to school. That's a serious safeguarding issue, and the fact that the party didn't see it as one was of concern. It was apparently an individual party member who sent the dossier to the general secretary. The person writing this letter appears to have done that in a personal capacity as opposed to an official capacity. Now, that brings questions as to how somebody in a personal capacity would have had the data to begin with. So it's quite telling that the dossier uses ethnic and racial criteria to identify new Labour Party members. It, it sees as being problematic. In addition to ethnicity and culture, I referred to through a number of, you know, tropes or, or stereotypes. You know, they're people who own houses, they're people who run local businesses. There's a reason to be suspicious. The dossier makes the same claims as the complaint letter that was sent to the party leaders four years earlier. This report describes the activities of a small group of Labour Party members involved in coordinated activities to take over both the constituency parties that make up the London borough of Newham. It is shocking, yes. The word being used in taken over. Activities to take over both constituency parties in Newham. Take over. If you have 80% BAM living in those areas and the mostly membership are from the ethnic minorities, that word take over is completely wrong. Perhaps someone who done that don't like the ethnic minority at all. Mehmood Mirza, or his property company, own at least 10 properties in Newham. All 10 have party members registered as living in them, including Mehmood Mirza himself. There are up to 33 party members in total that have been identified as living in these homes. Some of the addresses appear very overcrowded. But they're just trying to portray that I'm a bad guy. I am somebody who is using his property to recruit a membership. They're saying that I am trying to infiltrate in the Labour Party. Racial profiling was used to provide a detailed analysis of the BAME membership in Newham. There was graphs with a breakdown of the dialect members spoke if you're using ethnicity to identify people as a problem within your group, then that suggests that there's something institutionally wrong. It's victimization and weaponization of Islamophobia. 
I think the Labour Party has used the race card to control the Labour Party in London Borough of New York especially because they, they're singling out the Muslim community and Asian community. I find this dossier completely unbelievable. And reading this is like reading some sort of far-right tract by some demented American right-winger. And this is published or done inside the Labour Party. It's terrifying. But whoever the author of this, he must have access to all these information from someone within the Labour Party because ordinary person cannot have that. David Gillis shouldn't have access to any of this information, actually. He's not a Labour Party official. Under data protection, the secretary and the membership secretary had access to electronic data. So this person, who I believe authored the report, where they would get the information, I don't know. And that seems like a breach of the Data Protection Act. Britain has strict data protection laws known as GDPR, which are overseen by an Information Commissioner's Office, or ICO. Labour Party headquarters did not report a breach. One of the few really clear provisions of GDPR is a requirement to report any data breaches within 72 hours to the regulator. The more senior members of the party find out about a data breach, the higher the obligation to, to report this breach, or series of breaches, potentially, to the ICO. The dossier advises the General Secretary to suspend Newham's Labour parties and its Muslim leaders. Only a rigorous process of this sort will clean up the membership of both constituency Labour parties in Newham. Within weeks, Mehmood Mirza is suspended hours before party members were to vote on selecting candidates for local councils. If he hadn't have been suspended, he would have won overwhelmingly. So it's dirty tricks. Suspend him at five o'clock when there's no one left in the office because they can't defeat us politically. They'll defeat us through bureaucratic measures. And that's exactly what they've done. Should one of these members submit a subject access request, they would see this dossier in its entirety and we would be liable for legal action. A subject access request, or SAR, is a legal right under Britain's General Data Protection Regulations, or GDPR. People can demand that organisations or companies reveal personal data held about them. I applied for a subject access board two years ago. I never got any response. The only response I got, they asked for the ID to be provided, which I have provided. I have applied for the SARS request twice, but I never actually got the uh, response back from them. If the data or the responses to the questions posed by the data subjects are not answered within the outer limit of 90 days, then that in itself is a breach of GDPR. Halima Khan says she told her boss at Labour Party headquarters of her concerns. I feel that this dossier is potentially criminal in nature because we weren't provided with how the author of the dossier had come to have all this data on these members. It's not data that we collect as a party anyways. I'm scared, more scared now, after seeing this, the level where they can go to. 
If somebody following your children to school, it's not normal, is it? It's utterly shaming of this one. I mean, utterly shaming. It's against everything the Labour Party is supposed to believe in. I'd even thought, if I was the police, I'd be looking into investigating this dossier, because it strongly suggests that the Labour Party's been breaking the law. In March 2021, Newham's Labour Party branches are suspended. More than 5,000 mostly Muslim party members are denied a voice. They deny the democracy, so we've been denied our democratic right to choose our own councillors, choose our own mayor. When I mentioned the potential criminality of this dossier, I was effectively pushed off the project as I challenged the party's decision to suspend the whole of Newham based on the dossier. When Marcia Hutchinson backs a pro-Corbyn candidate over a sitting black councillor, she is accused of racism. I am shocked, infuriated, that she had the audacity to think that she could come along and interfere by putting someone up against me when I am the sitting councillor. To me, that is uncomradely and racist. Comments were made to me and about me, which I considered to be defamatory, and those were made by sitting councillors and the then leader of the council. Councillor Pat Carney sends an email. Many comrades have brought to my attention that disgraceful attack on the group and its members by the above member. It follows this member dancing on the deselection of a working-class woman of African heritage. Pat Carney wrote to 94 out of 96 councillors to say that I was wealthy and privileged. I'm not sure what made him think that, but I went to Oxford from a comprehensive school in Bradford. First person from my family to go to university, but the mere fact that I went to Oxford was used as a stick to beat me with. I think they see authentic black people as poor and inarticulate, and if you're articulate, then you are no longer black and you can be ignored. Six months after becoming a councillor, Hutchinson resigns. The files include the grievance letter of another senior black woman in the party. After Starmer becomes leader in 2020, her career stalls. We are not naming her. So here is where my unfair treatment by party comes in. I apply for a role that sits within the same team I work in, a sidestep remaining on the same grade. A role, objectively speaking, I am overqualified for. I get shortlisted. The role is given to a policy officer with no management experience. She is offered a more junior role. With a reduced salary, a demotion. How can this even happen? Like, there, there, is, there is still some level of employment law in the country. There is this sort of thing that seems to be emerging where political parties don't seem to be answerable to the law of the land. Like, they are lawless. I am a prime example of why so many say the party has a problem with race. It is why you can count on one hand the number of senior black women in the party. To see this happening at a senior level within the Labour Party is just disgusting. Not just disheartening, disgusting. It makes me feel viscerally ill, sick in my gut. And that's one of the reasons I'm no longer in the Labour Party, because it affects your health to see this kind of thing played out so openly by people who don't care. They actively don't give a damn. The hierarchy of racism identified in the Ford report means that those accused of anti-Semitism are suspended while issues that concern Muslims are overlooked. 
for a young Muslim woman, it was an incredibly toxic environment to be working in within that unit. I explicitly asked whether or not my job would be at risk for supporting the freedom and liberation of Palestinians. And the response, quite frankly, was, I'll have to get back to you on that. As an individual that struggled with cases of Islamophobia and trying to get suspensions, I believe I was regarded as a troublemaker within the organization. Khan opposed the party's reinstatement of Trevor Phillips, the former head of Britain's Equalities Commission. She is accused of leaking news of it to the media and is dismissed. Her colleague is also accused. There was a leak to the press that Trevor Phillips had been readmitted to the party, and we were wrongly accused of doing that. And we were suspended immediately without any evidence or um, a chance to defend ourselves. The evidence that they had was me opening up the Trevor Phillips file. This was something that the party persisted in its allegation against me, that I didn't have authority to access a file that I had written myself. The Labour files include recordings of a video call between Sir Keir Starmer and Black and Asian staff. Starmer had described the Black Lives Matter movement as a moment. There's a broader issue here, the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, or, or moment, if you like, internationally. It's for me to explain what I meant uh, when I said moment. Um, I um, am clear what I meant. Um, some people thought I meant fleeting moment. I honestly um, don't see that it's possible to read that into what I actually said. Keir Starmer is a lawyer. He chooses his words carefully. And when he described Black Lives Matter as a moment, it was very telling. The leadership's attitude to Black Lives Matter was incredibly hostile. The first thing that the leadership wanted to do was to appear on media and delegitimize the activists and also distance themselves from the policy agenda that they were promoting. Black and Asian staff write a memo to Starmer and deputy leader Angela Rayner. For black members of staff, we need to be listened to. We expect the manifestation of our trauma to be understood. Instead, the top line briefed was that Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, condemns the completely wrong tearing down of the statue of slave trader Edward Colston in Bristol at the weekend. I see Keir Starmer as a man who has absolutely no political integrity. But it's like, what do I need to say? We've taken the temperature that everybody in this country is against the Colston statue being dropped. So therefore, it doesn't matter whether I think it's right or wrong, I need to take a position that it's wrong because that was what will get me elected. Two days after the BAME Group's letter to Starmer and Rayner, the party drafts a strategy to regain black support. All but one of the team writing the report, called the Black Engagement Plan, is white. Ellie Robinson, Keir Starmer's deputy political director, emails. This morning, there was a discussion about BLM. I took an action to write up a plan for our work in this area going forward. I think our lines to the black community are in a good place. Halima Khan is chair of the BAME staff network at the time. Black Community Engagement Plan. I have never seen this before. I'm not surprised that this would have come to the BAME staff. Um, I don't think we would have we would have taken it well, uh, especially when. Black Lives Matter is referred to as a culture war. I, 
think the framing of the document very much shows like the anxiety of the leadership when it comes to these issues that are part of the culture, part of that being, they are terrified of being seen as acting on issues of diversity, inclusion, and um, because it might alienate some people who they perceive to be their key voters. Right, Jeremy to speak. The Labour Party lost support from what's called the Red Wall, mostly white working class communities, at the 2019 election. Many switched to the governing Conservative Party. And the idea seems to be promoted by the Labour leadership that Red Wall voters are kind of reactionary on social issues, that they're patriotic, Union Jack loving, slightly kind of possibly a bit racist people and explain it to the public by saying, well, you know, we need to win these, these particular seats back in the north of England. The Black Community Engagement Plan largely ignores Black Lives Matter and concentrates on winning over the Red Wall. It's been made in order to allow management to find an easy route through the kind of Black Lives Matter movement and find a, but there's very little in terms of coming up with a policy agenda that will um, tackle institutional racism. The liberal authoritarian axis is still going to be a key driver of voters' behavior. To get us back into a position on the culture war that divides our red wall voters from our liberal urban voters. There's nothing in there that actually talks about what are the really important issues that we need to address as a political party for those communities to gain and, and lives to be improved by us being the next government? Nothing. The Black Engagement Plan is more about electoral strategy than Black Lives Matter. We have managed to walk a delicate line over the past two weeks. These questions hinge on choices about which voters we are trying to win in which seats. The BAME staff network contributes little to the engagement plan. The involvement of the BAME staff has always been as a window dressing exercise to show that, you know, we are engaging, but when they're actually planning out, you know, their strategy, we're never consulted. The Labour files include David Evans' job interview with Keir Starmer before he was appointed General Secretary. I want to ask you about the Red Wall, um, or the so-called Red Wall, which we saw um, collapsing over a number of years, but particularly um, in certain communities in 2019. Um, we, the Labour Party, need to re-engage with those communities. How would you propose that we do that? Um, thank you. Um, as I said in my presentation, for me, this is, it's of course not the only thing we have to do, but it is the most important thing to do. I don't think we're going anywhere unless we can reconnect uh, here. And it's where we're from, uh, and so it should be what we're about. Um, uh, I've got every confidence we can do this. They're trying to find a position that will please a liberal urban voter as well as a person in the red wall seats who they believe to be people who are mostly white and who won't stand for issues that will improve equality in this country. It's absolutely fantastic to be here. Sort of suggests there's a sort of battle for the bottom, battle for the sewer between the Tories and Labour now for sort of bigoted white votes. Suggests that the Labour Party has lost its way. Al Jazeera's Labour files actually corroborate that there is something rather ill, troubling, frightening about the Labour Party. The British Muslim has to think twice now because Labour is not a safe haven for them as we was thinking in the past. And the Labour is maybe not the place you're thinking that you're supposed to be in. What the Labour Party took from me was a sense of believing that I could be a part of something bigger than me and advocate for change and, you know, a better world. What happened to me was enough to make me step down. It reeks of a culture where anti-black racism is not only accepted, not only tolerated, but actively promoted. <laughs>